Good morning. It is my honor and privilege to have a chance to preach to you all today through an online platform at Yanfuk Church English Worship. My name is Pastor Kaho Jim, and I'm residing in the United States. Two months ago, my wife and I worked so hard on that day, and we felt so tired. So we decided we are not going to cook. So we decided to go out to have a good dinner. And then we went to a Japanese restaurant, and I asked the waitress for a recommendation, and she recommended that the mentaiko pasta or mentaiko spaghetti. You guys know what is a mentaiko? Mentaiko is the cod roll, which means the fish egg of a cod, okay? So uh, when the dish arrived, I took a bite, and it was so delicious. Because of the creamy mentaiko sauce, it is such a good dish that we enjoy so much that night. So around like two weeks ago, I took a couple of days off as my vacation to relax a little bit. So I decided to cook my own mentaiko uh, pasta at home. So I went on YouTube, find a recipe, and try to follow the instruction to make this dish. And then take a look at the picture. This is the mentaiko pasta that I made. I even add some streams, broccoli, dry seaweed, and also some more tobiko. You see all the extra ingredients that I have? It looks good, right? I, I do think it looks very good. But let me ask you this. Do you think it tastes good? Well, it's difficult for you to tell, but let me tell you the truth. My mentaiko pasta didn't taste bad at all. However, it is not as good as the one that we get in the restaurant. The reason I failed to make the creamy mentaiko sauce that they have in the restaurant. So you can see that for my mentaiko pasta, it is a true mentaiko pasta because I have all the ingredients, including the extra ingredients of the shrimps, broccoli, seaweed, and tobacco. However, it is because I fail to add the mentaiko creamy sauce that makes the dish special. I fail in creating the authentic mentaiko pasta. So that's why it's not as good as what we tried in the restaurant. And to be honest with you, I think the scenario of my mentaiko pasta probably may be similar to one of the possible scenario of our churches today. What I'm going to say is sometimes in sometimes we may have a similar situation in church is that we have a lot of accessories, we have a lot of extra ingredients, but we may lack what make a church special in God's eyes. We may lack the true characteristics of a church that is being built up by God. And in the Bible, you know, the meaning of the church is never about a building. It is talking about a group of Christians grouping together. So in the Bible, it says, all the Christians must live up to the standard of a disciple listed in the Bible by God. And if we, the Christians, have the true characteristics of a true disciple, that means the church that you know, we are making up of, will have the true characteristics of a church being built up by God. So today, you and I are going to find out three true characteristics of a church being built up by God from the book of Acts chapter 9, verses 31. From Acts 9, 31, we are going to find out three true characteristics of a church which is being built up by God so that you and I understand what we have to look for in our spiritual life. What is our goal to be a disciple who is pleasing in God's eyes? So I hope you understand that. May the church that you and I are in not to be like a church who has a lot of accessories like children ministry, social welfare programs only, but lacking the true characteristics of a church being built up by God, just like the man, mentaiko pasta that I made. I have all the extra ingredients, but I lack the most important elements. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to understand the true meaning of the Word of God and empower us to live out your teachings so that we will be Christ's true disciples in this world to glorify you and to change our community with your love and teachings. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. The Bible verse that we are going to take a look at today is in Acts chapter 9, verses 31. Let's read Acts 9, 31 from Nat's Bible version. 
The Bible says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria experienced peace and thus was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. The church increased in numbers. Now, when I studied this Bible verse, I found that it will be better for us to go to the Greek in order to have a deeper understanding of its meaning. So now let's take a look at the Greek word diagram done by Bible scholar. Now you can see that from the word diagram, there are two main verbs for the subject, the church. The first verb is what's having, which is experienced from the Net Bible. And the second verb will be was being multiplied, which is the increase in numbers from the Net Bible version. Now, since both verbs are in imperfect tense in the Greek, it means that having peace and being multiplied are something that the church were experiencing frequently. That's very meaningful. That's why I translated them as was having and was being multiplied in order to convey the idea of a repeated actions. And take a look at the verb was having peace. It is attached with a participle being built up, which is was strengthened from the Net Bible version. And the verb was being multiplied was attached with the participle living. And the two characteristics of the living are important details for true characteristics of a church being built up by God. So here comes my own translation from the Greek, the James version. Take a look. It says, therefore, or then, the church throughout all the Judea, Galilee, Samaria, was having peace, being built up, and was being multiplied, living in the fear of the Lord and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. I just want to let you know from now on, I probably will refer to the James Version for today's sermon. Now let's take a look at Acts 9.31. Now you can see that it is talking about the church throughout all the Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. And you can see that the church, actually it is in a singular form. Well, we believe that, we understand that Luke is trying to talk about the universal church, which is in singular. And we understand that the universal church is actually composed of all the local churches around the world. So right here, we believe that the author of Acts, which is Luke, was trying to say that the unified universal church at that time was experiencing what is happening, what is recording in Acts chapter 9, 31 in all the area. Acts 9, 31, it tells us that the church in the first century was experiencing, was having peace. And during the time, the church is being built up. Now, as said before, the word was having is an imperfect tense. It means it is a repeatable action. That means that they experience peace frequently. So why did the church at that time experience peace frequently? Well, we need to find out the answer from the immediate context. Take a look at the beginning of verses 31. It starts with a conjunction, therefore or then, right? Which gives us a hint that we have to look at the previous context in order to determine what's going on. Why did the church have peace? Now, in the book of Acts, the whole chapter 9 is Luke talking about the story of Saul, which later became, became Paul the apostle, okay? Before Paul, uh, before Paul became a Christian, his name is Saul. And Saul is traveling around the area, persecuting Christians at that time. And on his way to the city of Damascus, he was being called by Jesus, and Jesus revealed to him. And Saul trusted Jesus as his personal savior and became the apostle Paul. And immediately, he started preaching the gospel of Christ around the, around the area. And he will debate with the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. So actually, in Acts chapter 9, verses 19 to 30, Luke briefly recorded that Paul immediately preached the gospel of Christ and traveling around for ministry for a couple of years. And right after 9.30, in Acts 9.31, Luke said, the church was having peace. So we understand that in Luke's mind, maybe the reason for the church being able to have peace at that time was that there is no more persecution from Saul. That means no more persecution of the Christian from the Apostle Paul. 
Or the second reason maybe it is because of Paul's ministry traveling around the area, preaching the gospel of Christ, bringing peace to different churches around that area. Luke said, it is during that peaceful period the church was being built up. Now, was being built up is a passive participle, telling us that someone is building up the church. And of course, according to the immediate context, this someone is our God. God is building up the church while the church was having peace. Now, the Greek word for building up, okay, it is oikodomio. Oikodomio, when this word is used on a building, it means construct. But when this word is used on human, the Bible Greek dictionary, BDAC, tells us that it means to help improve ability to function in living responsibility and effectively, or it just means strengthen. So it means at that time the Christian is empowered to live an effective discipleship life. Now, to the most of us, we may not experience any hardcore persecution because of our Christian faith. So this part of Acts 9.31 about having peace due to the cessation of persecution may not be too relevant to us. But think about this. Do we see certain totalitarian government which says in the Constitution saying that all their people will have the freedom of religion, but in reality that totalitarian totalitarian government prohibits Christians from preaching the gospel, prohibiting them from worshipping God, and then they, this government is also persecuting Christians, persecuting Christian leaders around. But if one day, the officials of this totalitarian, uh, so difficult to pronounce, totalitarian government, the official of this totalitarian government have experienced the love of God and trusted Christ as their personal saviors and have a change of mind, allowing the people to have true freedom of religion, allowing Christians to worship God openly and freely. Think about that. The Christians will no longer suffer from the persecution. And when they try to live a godly life, they will encounter less obstacles. Then they will be built up more easily, right? That will be the situation of how this words can look like today in our world. Brothers and sisters, even though you and I may not experience persecution like the first century church did, but today we can still apply what we learned from 931a right now. Don't you want your fellow Christians who is under persecution to be free, to be free of persecutions, to, get, to be able to worship God openly and freely? So pray. Pray for our suffering Christians and also pray for those totalitarian government officials that they may one day to know God, to trust Jesus, so that they can be part of the church and lift and lift and and and, and forsake those persecution, so that our fellow brothers and sisters can openly worship God freely. Just think about that. If God can change soul in the first century. Don't you think our almighty God can do wonders today? So brothers and sisters, pray for those who are being persecuted right now and also pray for the officials of those totalitarian government. They can experience God. They can be part of the church one day by trusting Jesus as their personal saviors. But well, that's the least we can do. We can pray and we will never lose hope. From Acts 9, 31a, we can see that when the church is being built up by God, the people of the church will be strengthened, empowered to live an effective discipleship life. And this is the first true characteristic of a church being built up by God mentioned in Acts 9.31. And it is definitely our goal to possess that in our Christian lives. Now remember, the Bible never said a church multiplication is only meaning to have an increase in head count, in numbers only. Read carefully, Acts 9.31. Increase in numbers with certain quality, which is increase in the number of Christians who can live an effective discipleship life. Are you one of those churches truly being built up by God? 
If you get that, if you understand that, what you do as a Christian or what you do as a Christian leader will be drastically different than those who just plan to attract people to church by social welfare programs, by children ministry alone. Okay? You are going to attract people, but you will never stop there. You will continue to nurture them and grow them into a true disciple who will live an effective discipleship life. Brothers and sisters, Acts chapter 9, verses 31a gave us an opportunity to evaluate our spiritual lives. Are we growing more spiritually mature than yesterday? Will the we of tomorrow grow more spiritually mature than the we of today? Are we keep growing? This is the question we have to ask. The first true characteristic of a church being built up by God is to have Christians who will live an effective discipleship life. Let's move on to 931b. Now take a look at the James Version. Luke said, apart from being built up by God, the church was being multiplied. Now this verb is another imperfect passive tense, which means the action is repeatable, which means the number of people of the church was kept being added on by God. But please pay attention to the participle of the word was being multiplied. This participle is living. And there are two characteristics describing the way of living. Therefore, right here, Luke is saying that the church which is being multiplied by God is not only having an increase of head counts alone, but head counts of Christians who live with certain characteristics of a true church being built up by God. And these two characteristics are living in the fear of the Lord and living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. As previously mentioned, the first true characteristics of a church being built up by God is to have people who will live, a effect, live an effective discipleship life. The second characteristics is to live in the fear of the Lord. And the third characteristics will be living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. These are the three true characteristics of a church being built up by God as mentioned in Acts 9.31. These are the characteristics that you and I have to possess as the disciples of Christ. Now let's take a look at the last two characteristics and see if you have those in Yanfolk Church, in Yanfolk Christian community. The first we are going to talk about is living in the fear of the Lord. Now in the Bible, no matter it is the Hebrew word for fear or the Greek word for fear in anti, your know, Hebrew is for the OT, right? The meaning of fear is reverent, piety, which means you can take it as paying your utmost respect to God. Paying your utmost respect to God is one of the characteristics of a true disciple of a true church. Now, we are talking about respecting God in your daily lives. So if you respect God, you will do what He says. When you respect God, you will live your life according to the rules of God in your daily lives. And the last characteristics of the church being built up by God is to live in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word for encouragement is paraklesis. Now, it has a couple meanings. It can mean comfort or exhortation, encouragement, or request. But remember, in 931a, Luke is talking about living an effective discipleship life, right? And it is talking about living in the fear of God, okay? So with that immediate context, I would say in right here, it should be translated as encouragement or exhortation. So this third characteristics of a church being built by God, living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit means you will be sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and you will live according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the sermon on Acts 9.31 aims to tell you that in the Bible, when God starts to multiply a church, when God starts to add people to the church, it is never about just the head count. It is about increasing the number of true disciples who will, do the free, who will possess the free characteristics. Number one, 
they were being built up by God, meaning that they will continue to live an effective discipleship life. Number two, they are living in the fear of the Lord. They will pay their utmost respect to God always. And number three, living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. That means they will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's they will be sensitive to the Spirit's guidance and they will follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let's evaluate our Christian lives. Does our lifestyle reflect any one of those three characteristics? Do we follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Do we pay our utmost respect to God always? Now, brothers and sisters, this one Bible verse, it seems to be very easy to understand. It seems to be a little bit simple. But once you dig deep into the meaning of God, you can see that it actually gives us a, a lot to reflect upon, a lot of self-evaluation. It, give, it gives us a lot of insights. And if we truly, listen to me, if we truly understand the deep meaning of this Bible verse, you will know that actually Acts 9.31 is dominating the pastoral direction of every single church on earth. Why do I say that? Because from the Greek structure of this Bible verse, you will understand the reason why God is building up His church. This, act, this Bible verse actually tells us the, reason, the reasons why God would build up His church on earth. Now, take a look at the PowerPoint. We are going to go a little bit technical right now, okay? But don't worry, follow my lead. You will get what I mean. Now, take a look at the Greek grammatical structure of 931b. Now, you can see the yellow text and the red text, right? The yellow text is the participle clause, and the red text is the verb, okay? So in English, what's being multiplied is, uh, for my translation, it was being put in up front because in the English translation, usually we put the verb in front and then it's participles behind it. But you can see that from the Net Bible version, it's tried to follow the Greek original sentence structure. So they put the church increase in numbers at the end. But obviously, right now you can see that from the Greek structure, the participle clause is placed in front of the verb, right? So when I read that Greek text, I went back to the grammar book that we used in seminary and double check. And whenever the participle clause is placed in front of the verb, it can convey an idea of causal participles, which means it is telling us the reason why the verb can happen. It is telling us why God will grow the church. The reason is the participle clause. So right here, it means living in the fear of God and living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit is the reason why the church is being multiplied by God. Therefore, Luke is not just saying the three true characteristics of a church being built up by God. It is telling us that it is because of the church has Christians who live a godly discipleship life. Therefore, God continue to add on them more and more true disciples. And this, and this explanation can be verified from Net Bible Chinese version. Now take a look at the PowerPoint. The Net Bible Chinese version clearly tells us that it is because of the life of living in the fear of the Lord and in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, the numbers of the church, what the church was being multiplied. The deep meaning of this Bible verse is a church truly being built up by God will have Christians who respect God all the time and who will live in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. And when the church is full of this kind of true disciples, God will add more of the same kind to the church. It is just like a never-ending positive loop. It is just like a never-ending loop. This kind of positive loop, never-ending loop, is very understandable. It is just like when you are at work. Your boss gives you a couple of teammates who is being faithful, who is um, 
being unified with the whole team. So that's why you guys are very effective and you can uh, surpass all the standard and getting the project done with an A plus grade quality all the time. So what would your boss do? Your boss, if he is a smart boss, if he is a good boss, he will add more capable and competent teammates to your, to your team in order for you to succeed, to build you up so that you can do good for the company, right? Your boss, if, it is, if he is a bad boss, what he is going to do is going to add you more, I have to say in Cantonese, 大懒虫, 大懒蛇, the big nasty snakes or the pig head teammates, 你豬頭餅隊友呢? He will, if, if he add those kind of disqualified teammates to your team, he is just going to pull your legs, right? Why would a boss do that if he loves the company? And for sure, our God is not a bad boss. He's a good, he's a good boss. So it is normal for us to understand that God is going to add on to the current good church with more good Christians who can live an effective discipleship life, who will respect God always and live in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? And this is exactly what the book of Acts talking about, how God will add people to the church. He adds godly people to the church, which already has a lot of godly people. Now, Bible commentator will tell us there are at least seven progress reports of church growth in the book of Acts. And Acts 9.31 is the number three report because we don't have much time, okay? So I'm not going to go through all the seven reports with you, but if you go and check out all the seven reports, I can tell you that every time when you read about Luke recording God adding people to the church, he was talking right after the quality of the people of the church. Like in chapter 2, he is talking about, oh, the new believer immediately followed the teachings of the apostles. And then Luke said, God continued to add people to the church. And for the rest of the reports, you can, say, you can see that Luke is always saying God add people who adhere to the word to the church, not just adding headcounts with some yiffy Christians only. Brothers and sisters, now this seems to be a very simple verse has a very, very deep meaning. Do you get it? If the church, that means Christians, the leaders, if the Christian leaders understand the significance of this Bible verse, you should know that even if the church has tons of people, has tons of accessories, or has tons of extra ingredients like social welfare programs, children ministry, blah, 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 those are good, keep it up. But... If the church does not take priority in building up Christians to possess all these three true characteristics of a church being built up by God, the leaders are not doing their job right. And the Christians are not doing their job right. So if you understand the true meaning of 931, a Christian can no longer be a Yifu Christian or Sunday Christian who do not grow spiritually. Because even if you are the biggest church in town, and if your people does not live up to the standard of discipleship listed in the Bible, how do you know that your church is being grown by God? Or if your church is being grown by consumerism, because the church only used consumerism to attract people to take Jesso, the Hong Kong, the Cantonese land, Jesso. You just attract people to take Jesso from the church without challenging them to grow, to fit, to be up to par to the standard listed by God in the Bible about the quality of a true disciple. Think about that. If your church is composed of Yiffy Sunday consumer Christians, what would you think the newcomers that they brought to church would become in the future? If your church is composed of Yiffy Sunday consumer Christians, what would the newcomer brought by them become in the future? On the other hand, if your church is composed of dedicated Christians who can live an effective discipleship life, who respect God always and living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, what would you think the newcomers that they brought to church would become in the future? 
in a Chinese 近朱者赤，近墨者黑。I have no idea how to express that in English, so take it or leave it. Think about that. Whatever you are is going to get more. Whatever you are. So, brother and sister, be the right kind of Christians with a biblical mind. Do not let the false world view of having a big numbers equals to be a successful church fool you. In the Bible, if a church is being built up by God, it is always increased with numbers of true disciples. Well. I'm not a pastor who can reach you every week, so to be honest with you, I really don't know what your current spiritual situation is, and what is the most important area in life that you need to apply today's teaching. But I will try my best to give you a couple pointers of applications here today. First, let's talk about how to possess the true characteristic of a. Church being built by God, the, church, the first characteristic is to live an effective、uh, discipleship life. Right? This is what I'm going to challenge you. When you attend worship or listen to sermon, don't be a consumer sitting there judging the preaching ability of the preachers. Be humble. Be humble to the teaching of God. Get a notebook. Open up a Google Doc on your cell phone or whatsoever. I challenge you to mark down the challenges that preachers give to you in every single sermon. Mark it down and pray hard to ask God to empower you to live it out every single week. All right, mark down the challenges that the preachers give to you, and pray to God to empower you to live it out. So you will not be just a Sunday Christian to、so、come here to sleep for the hour of worship during sermon time, but you absorb God's teaching and try to live it out in your life. That's number one challenge. Mark down all the application challenge that the preachers give you and try to live it out. For the second characteristic, living in the fear of the Lord, just pay utmost respect to God in every area of life during your day. Let me give you a picture. When you do anything, just think. Okay, is my action showing my respect to God? You can start with this. Because of the pandemic, a lot of us has been on online worship for a long time. How many of you, while having online worship, you will sing out loud to praise God as prescribed in the Bible, or you just sit there at home? Enjoying a concert, which you are the main character, and God disappeared. If you think about your action, pay the utmost respect to God. You can start with like singing out loud at home while you worship God, because it is prescribed at the Bible. This is what God wants from us during praise, not for you to sit there to enjoy a concert, or when you respect God. During your quarrel with your spouse, during the argument, whenever you're so angry, you're so upset, you want to say some demeaning words to your spouse. Respect God. God told us not to use demeaning words, right? And God told us to love our spouse in Ephesians chapter five. If you respect God, you will follow His word. During a quarrel with your spouse, I know the love between you two may be diminished, but if you have your respect to God, you can control yourself to live up to God's standard. So that's a couple of pictures of how do you live a life which is showing we all respect to God always, or if you are serving God right now. Well, I have to say it in Cantonese because it's so good. More head or don't serve God. With half full energy, serve God with all you have, because you respect God. That are the couple pointers. Number three, living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you are a Christian who is sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that's much more easier. Follow His lead. 
follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If He tells you to do this, do that. If He tells you to do something, do something. Do it with faith. Follow His command. But if you realize that, oh, I have been a Christian for so long, but I still do not understand what is the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I strongly encourage you to start building up your relationship with God through a regular devotion to God's Word. You've got to have a relationship with God in order to be sensitive to God's teaching through the Holy Spirit, right? Relationship. You got to have a good relationship with God so that you can be sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But please, please, and please don't count reading a page of two of those fast food devotional material as your regular devotion. Pay attention to God's Word. Spend time with God's Word. I would challenge you to spend time to at least when you do your devotion, try to figure out the complete unit of the Bible passage. Figure out the authorial intent or the central proposition of the Bible passage so that you truly understand God's Word. If you don't understand God's Word, how do you verify the guidance of the Holy Spirit to you? It's from the Spirit, right? Most of the time, most of the time, people will say, oh, God guide me to chase after this girl. But she is not a Christian. And you say it is the guidance from the Holy Spirit. It is obviously against the teaching of the Bible. You got to know God's word in order to verify if the voices or the direction you get is from the Holy Spirit, right? And you got to have a good relationship with God so that you can be sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So go build up your relationship with God through a regular devotion of the word of God. It is my prayer that if one day I can see you in person in Yanfo Church, you will tell me God starts changing you to have all these three true characteristics of a church being built up by God because of today's sermon. And when I visit you, you can tell me, I'm sure my church is being built up by God and not by attraction of consumerism. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We know we are weak. We are not strong enough, but we always have a strong God behind our back. Help us to understand the true meaning of being a big church in God's eyes. It is not about head counts. It is about how many true disciples living an effective discipleship life, living a life which has fear of you and living in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Help us, help Yanfo Church, the English congregation, to be a church truly being built by God, processing all these three true characteristics of a church which is pleasing in God's eyes. Help us to glorify you on earth, to be, a witness, to, to be a great witness of Christ on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.